Hi, I'm Donald with Steambright Supply, and today we're going to test our Clean Storm 2000 watt electric inline heater. And we set up a little experiment here to see what's going on with it. Uh, first thing you'll notice it's really an ultra compact, uh, small, and lightweight heater. It's only 11 and a half inches long, it's 7 and a half inches wide. Um, what we did is we've got it set up to the hot water of our office. Now here at this building we have a real tiny little five gallon water heater and it's actually set at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So we went ahead and kind of simulated you hooking it up to your portable extractor by turning on the hot water. Uh, we've got 100 PSI here in this building which is a little higher than, than most but also similar to a lot of carpet cleaning machines. And we have feeding that hot water into the unit. Now normally uh, you would, we supply a short piece of five foot long hose for you to snap this into the front of your extractor so you can feed this unit with pressure or you can use building pressure as well. Uh, coming out of it, there is a 600 PSI safety relief valve. Now this is designed that if you step away from the heater, uh, naturally as you heat water it does expand and you don't want to break the heater so we've put this safety valve in here and this would go back in your fresh water tank of your portable or you can lay it in the sink if you're near a sink. Uh, we've also added a temperature gauge. Uh, this is actually just something we made up here. Normally your solution hose is going to be coupled directly in here but so we can see what's going on we've added just a temperature gauge between the two of them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and and first of all, I'll let you know when you plug the unit in, you get a green light. Now the green light tells you that you have power and uh, when we turn the switch on, this means that we have power past the circuit breaker. Uh, these lights here, because there are two separate 1000 watt heating elements, these actually will stay on while the unit is heating. I'm going to turn it off for right now. We're going to go ahead and what we've done is we put 25 feet of solution hose on here we put an O1 jet and if we spray 100% of the time we wanted to see how well does this unit maintain water by spraying 100% of the time. Now naturally when you clean carpet you're cleaning, letting go, doing a dry stroke. So the water flow rate is, is going to be fairly similar. And you see here on the gauge when we do that without turning the unit on it's showing uh, about 110 degrees. Uh, I test the sink before I actually started this and I had, uh, it's probably reading a little bit higher than it was normally because the sink was only giving me 90 degrees and it's a little higher because I had used the heater earlier today. And um, but let's go ahead and turn it on. And um, a lot of times what a lot of the cleaners will do is they'll turn it on and let it preheat. This holds about uh, 12 ounces of water I believe on the inside and um, if you were doing your pre-spraying and prep work maybe moving some of the smaller furniture or any kind of pre-vacuuming uh, having the unit on will allow the unit to preheat. Now we'll notice on more we put a little amp meter on here to see what kind of how much electricity is it using. It's uh, using right at about 15.1 15.2 amps to run the 2000 watts. So ideally you'd want to plug it in on a 20 amp circuit. Um, that'll keep it from tripping. If you're on a 15 it'd probably hold for a while but you probably only get to clean for a couple hours and then it's going to trip. So we're going to go ahead and let this thing heat up and it's going to take about two minutes and we'll see you in two minutes and uh, let you see how hot it gets. Okay we've waited two minutes for the unit to preheat and you'll notice that the two heating element lights, indicator lights, are off. But the power indicator light's still on because that's controlled by the switch. So this is going to simulate like turning your start cleaning. So we're going to go ahead and just set this on in the bucket. And now that the hot water is going by the temperature gauge, you're going to see the heat on in the inside of the unit. Right now we're at uh, 240. 250, 260, 270, and uh, 
It goes up to about 270 degrees and we're still spraying this. Again, we have it through 25 feet of hose. That's going to start coming down a little bit because, again, the water, the heating element's still off. Um, the water that's being fed into the unit's 90 degrees. I ran this experiment earlier today and noticed that uh, at about 195, they turned themselves back on again. And because we're spraying 100% of the time, it's going to continue to fall, and then it maintains itself at about 165, uh, where it doesn't fall down. It actually will maintain that. When being fed in with 90 degree water, it's spraying 100% of the time. So that's uh, actually a pretty good rise. It's about a 70 degree temperature rise up and above what's being fed through the heater. Here we're still. Spring full time, and we're actually at 170 right now. And again, what would happen if you set your wand down or got interrupted uh, and you quit cleaning, the unit's going to turn itself back off again, and then once it uh, you start to pick up the wand and you start cleaning and the water cools down below 195, the unit's going to turn itself back on again. Just to show you how to disconnect the unit, um, go ahead and turn it off. We'll go ahead and turn the uh, water pressure off temporarily. You want to turn your water pressure off and your portable off. And the unit, actually, it's, it all quick disconnects. So you can relieve the pressure out of the unit by squeezing the trigger on your wand. And just disconnect your hoses, unplugs, and carry it into your truck. Another thing that uh, we wanted to point out today on this uh, compact heater is that in the event it ever did need to be serviced, it's got to be probably one of the easiest heaters to service because literally you could just open up the latches here and that allows you access to the inside to be able to service any of the elements on the inside of it. Some of the other makes and model brands heaters that we've sell and sold in the past require a little bit of finesse to get in them to fix them. This one's got to be the easiest.